Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm the Bearded Techie and today I got a tutorial coming at ya. Hey, what's up guys? Today we got a tutorial on how to get a water block installed on the MSI Gaming X Trio 3090. This also applies to the 3080 uh, because the 3080 and the 3090 uh, of this particular uh, card model is exactly the same. The PCB design is the same, so this will apply to the Gaming X Trio 3080 as well. Possibly the 3070, I don't know. I did see pictures of the card and it looks very, very similar, but the, the dimensions might not be the same, so. Uh, you may want to do some extra research if you have a 3070 Gaming X Trio and you're wanting to water cool it. Uh, just make sure that you are uh, getting a water block that is compatible with your card. Okay, so just jumping right in. We're going to be removing all these screws with a Phillips head size PH1. Pretty simple, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove all the screws from the back plate. And it's a good idea to organize screws by length and width in a tray or something, but luckily all the screws from the back plate are the same size, no need to worry. And the screws from the actual GPU retention mechanism, they are captive screws, and just pry the back plate off pretty gently, very easy to get off. And then uh, you're going to want to grab these leftover thermal pads off the memory modules on the PCB and stick them onto the corresponding spots on the back plate. Next, let's go ahead and start removing the GPU retention screws. Uh, I like to go in a star pattern, 50%, 50%, 50%, and then back around again to finally get them loose. Next, you're going to go ahead and disconnect all the LED and fan control uh, headers. Pretty simple. Uh, if you have sausage fingers like me, you may need to use a little Phillips head screwdriver to aid in the process, but be very careful. These are very delicate connectors and can easily be broken. Next, just start prying up on the PCB very gently, just in case there are any screws you missed. Uh, it should come off fairly easily, but sometimes they can get pretty stuck on there. Next, we're going to go ahead and wipe off any of the old thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. And we're going to go ahead and get all the other thermal pads that were left on the memory modules and the VRMs off the PCB and back onto the cooler as we're not going to reuse those ones. We're going to use the thermal pads from the water block. And again, just wiping everything down with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to get any residue off of any of the components. Next is the most tedious process, and that's just cutting all the different thermal pads to size and getting them stuck onto the board. Now just go along and go through and look at your cooler and look at the board and just make sure you get everything covered that needs to be. And now I go ahead and apply some thermal paste, a very thin coat across the entire GPU. I like to do it this way so that I can ensure that every square millimeter of that thing has thermal paste on it and uh, just a very thin coat, spread it very thinly, and uh, you should be good. Now just a quick note, this uh, support bracket here that's held on with two screws near the I.O. bracket, it will prevent the block from fitting flushly on the, uh, from fitting flushly on the GPU die itself, so you will need to take that off as well. I didn't really cover that in the video, I'm sorry for that, but if you're using a Bixky water block, this will need to come off. I can't say so for any other brand though. And once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and put our block on top of the GPU water block box. And this is to lift it up off the table because of the GPU IO shield will actually prevent the PCB from making flush contact with the block if you're laying everything flat on the table. So go ahead and get it up on the box, line it up, center it as best you can, and just get those holes lined up for the GPU retention mechanism. 
And just like we got it off, we're gonna put it on the same way. 50% on the first screw, and then in a star pattern, second screw 50%, third screw 50%, and then back around to finish it up. And once that's done, we can go ahead and get our back plate back on. Now with that uh, support bracket gone, I, th I do believe there are a couple screws that are not going to be able to go back into the back plate. So you are going to have a couple screws left over if you are using the big ski water block. So just keep that in mind. If you do have a couple of extra screws at the end of this with the big ski water block, uh, it's not your fault. And just once again, yeah, this, this thing will prevent the water block from making flush contact with the GPU, but if you get that off, it will easily fit on properly, and there's no flex in the card with this thing off. That was mainly, I believe, to help support the card with that big, heavy, beefy air cooler on there. With this, uh, it's much less flex in the card, much more stiff. Oh, gosh. Okay, so wrapping up, um, final thoughts. Overall, I'm, uh... I'm pretty satisfied with the overall design of the block itself. Um, slightly disappointed with some of the choices made uh, in the engineering process. Uh, the choice to not actively cool some of those uh, caps and chokes, which you can uh, you can't see through here, but this is directly underneath uh, the right side, your right, my left, of this little nickel plate here. Uh, they did not uh, apply active cooling to that. Uh, disappointed with that. Uh, the fact that the uh, support bracket here that is normally internally installed about like that uh, would not fit just due to the fact that the nickel block here comes uh, towards the IO shield uh, just slightly too far, about an eighth of an inch. And I think a solution to that which I'm strongly considering is just uh, grinding down about an eighth of an inch uh, towards this way from this little support bracket just so that I can get it installed and it has that extra support. Uh, the, the actual metal that the uh, back plate is made out of is actually quite soft, very easy to bend. Um, it's probably aluminum. Aluminum has uh, excellent heat dissipation qualities when compared to steel. Um, so it is quite soft. I can imagine that it doesn't provide a whole lot of support, uh, which is why they probably threw this in there. Uh, so I think down the road I will do that. I'm not going to do it right away. I'm going to go ahead and get this installed and get some, uh, some testing going. Uh, I will be making a full review of this block. Uh, in the weeks to come talking about you know the results I, I get from it compared to the stock cooler and uh, you know just the an overall review of the actual card itself rather than me just talking about a few things in this video because you know down here we we want to help y'all we want to give you a little taste of what life is really like so come on down take a spin got something for you you're gonna enjoy it yeah, keep coming back, y'all. Keep coming back. I won't let you down. All right, see you in the next video. <laughs>